What's up out there? So I got tired of working on my Caustic Arrow build. I stalled out where, what are we in? Uh, tier 10. I did get a tier 11, a red map. I did start getting into red maps just slightly, but it kind of stalled out. The build was, I don't know. I kind of got tired of playing it. This is kind of how things go. I get to a point where it gets a little bit tough and I'm just kind of over it. I want to go do something else for a while. So I worked on another build. This one I had started at one point and I just picked him up and I don't know, he was like level 30 or something when I picked him up the other day. <clears throat> Got him through the campaign today. This is a Volcanic Fisher Chieftain. Now, life is very short. I need to add, I need to bump up his life. A lot of stats need to be improved. His resistances are very good aside from Chaos Res. Uh, not so great armor. Life regen is good. I turned up an Immortal Flesh somewhere along the way, so I worked that into my uh, setup here and it's not too bad of a roll actually it's not too bad at all so i also picked up some uh these nomic storms these things have 20 percent increased movement speed i don't really care about anything else that's on here i just kept these on for the dexterity and the increased movement speed uh sure the cold res was nice but the rest of it was kind of unimportant basically i needed this for the movement speed to kind of blast through the campaign so the rest of the gear is not that great um the build, it was kind of fun to play, but through the campaign, it was, I don't know, I had some rough spots, especially with the bossing. And then there were certain parts that um, I kept going without, like I had a, a bunch of open sockets for a while. And it took me a little bit to figure out what I wanted to put in there. And then I kind of got to thinking about it. I'm like, you know what? Like Molten Shell, Blood Rage, and Automation is like a, a gimme at this point. Uh, so we've got Leap Slam for movement, uh, Purity of Fire, uh, Berserk. Let's see, what are we running up here? Holy Flame Totem, Flame Wood, Support, Culling Strike, and Multiple Totem Support. That way I can have three of these things out. I was using these through the campaign because you can kind of, uh, let's see, throw these things out here. Let these do some work. They drop, uh, what is this, Holy Ground or whatever, uh, Consecrated Ground. So you get a little bit of bonuses in there from those things a little bit. Uh, Volcanic Fisher, Life Tap, Added Fire Damage, and Fire Pen. I could probably use some different things. I haven't really played around a lot with this. It just kind of what seemed adequate for the moment. I did Life Tap this because I kept running out of mana for a while, so I just Life Tapped it and moved on. I, I am running a Retaliation, so we've got Crushing Fist with Ruthless Support, Fist of War, and melee physical uh, damage support. This could probably be optimized and probably some of the damage, uh, probably some of the issues I had with damage through the campaign are because I really didn't sit down and optimize this a lot. So I just kind of picked some things up. I do have purity elements and purity of fire, both. What I've been doing is switching between them. So when I need to worry about freeze immunity and stuff like that, I've been kicking purity elements on. Uh, when we get to the passive tree, I got one of the ascendancy points to where I could drop that and start going over to purity of fire just to boost the fire up. But I've kind of been going, uh, let's see, we were on this here. I've kind of been going back and forth between the two. As I start running into stuff that freezes me, I'll just switch it over real fast. Seems to take care of things. Uh, running vitality, arrogance, and then clarity with the arrogance so that it's got a little bit, uh, uh, just kept running into so many mana issues. I arrogant put arrogance on and shoved this over on that side. It takes care of it. It's probably not the be best way to do it because there's a lot of cost reservation multiplier on it, but uh, it solves the problem. And it doesn't really help my life issues all out that much, but it is what it is. So retaliation skills, let's talk about those for a second. I like the retaliation skills. I tried a few of them. I don't remember which ones I tried. Um, let's see here not auto exertion divine retribution uh let's see was this the one i don't remember what this one did exactly i might have liked this one the eviscerate there was one that i think i liked eviscerate also glacial uh, shield swipe i did not care for all that much the problem i had with this one is it shoots out in like a wave and if you don't have it pointed in the correct direction it just kind of misses stuff i liked it i thought it was pretty cool but it just and it didn't really dig it all that much. I think I like the eviscerate and I don't remember divine retribution, but this one here, this crushing fist, a giant 
fist it just comes down and punches the ground and if you throw this fist of war support on here uh it it does a little bit more damage here and there and it, it's pretty nice i kind of like it the one thing i don't like on we should just go into a map and i could show this off the one thing i don't particularly like about um the retaliation in general like we used to have what was it vengeance or something like that we used to have stuff that just automatically hit and this one you have to look for the little icon in the corner like there to come in and slam down sometimes you miss that there is an auditory thing that you can pick up so i don't know it's not terrible but it's kind of a little clunky at times to use i'm not a fan of it I kind of wish it was automated. I wish you could, eh, maybe you can. I haven't really looked up. Maybe there is a way to automate those. I don't think so. I think they're manual on purpose. Unless there's a way to auto exert it or something. I don't think so. I kind of don't think there is. Maybe, I'm not sure. Because I think, I don't know. I tried looking at cries for a little bit. I didn't like cries all that much. Like that really sucked up a lot of mana and stuff like that. So this is kind of how I got through the campaign. And once I got through the campaign, I was like, you know what? Volcanic Fisher's okay, but this Tectonic Slam is kind of funny. I got through the campaign and figured this out. Tectonic Slam is a lot better. So if we go by the tooltip in the game here, this is 5,453 damage with Volcanic Fisher. If I throw this on, it's 6,596 with Tectonic Slam. And this is already level 16 for Volcanic Fisher, and this is only level 12 for Tectonic Slam. So it's already outpacing it. A need for Steve Underground. I wonder if that's uh, shit stain Steve from last league. Um, so I found this out after the campaign got done. This might have helped out some of my issues. So I ended up switching over to this. Oddly enough, I feel like I'm surviving a lot better with this skill. I don't know. I, I don't know why. So I noticed that I started getting uh, these up here. Uh, endurance char charges. And I thought maybe this thing was giving me endurance charges. I couldn't figure out where they were coming from, so I switched back to my old skill and found out that there were endurance charges coming in from it, too. So I, was, I don't know where they were coming from because I don't have anything... I don't think I have something specked into the tree. I don't think you just get them. Maybe you do, but um, I'm not sure. I don't know where they're coming from. So at any rate... Um, I thought maybe that was making me a little bit tankier because I was getting endurance charges from this thing. But if you look over it, it uses endurance charges. It doesn't give you them. So I don't know where they're coming from. But the build overall, you know, we go look at the passive tree real quick here. So what I've done with the passive tree is I came over this way. It's kind of what you would do with, uh, oh, like bone shatter and stuff like that. You come down to born to fight, heart of the warrior, Warrior's Blood, those I think are kind of a given. I've come down here into the Prismatic Skin for the plus two all Ellie res. We've got plus one max fire res. Nothing's coming by over here. Uh, let's see. I think first, yeah, I could probably take this corner out. I didn't realize I had had that. So, oh no, because I'm coming up into here. So let's see. I wanted to come up and pick up combat stamina because it increases your armor and life and gives you a little bit of regen. I thought that was good. Tireless, I like that it reduces the cost of skills. I was trying to save mana with that at, up at that point. I've also picked up Arsonist for the damage, you know, fire damage and stuff like that. Nomadic Teachings for the increased elemental res, which is, I like this node that it's here now. I uh, picked up a little bit of fire res here and plus one to max fire res and plus two to all elemental res. So that's cool. And then we've came up over here to pick up Divine Fury and Divine Judgment because you get a lot of fire damage off of those. Well, some extra Resolute Technique. I thought I was getting, thought stuff was missing me, so I took this so that things can't evade. With this other skill, with this Tectonic Slam, I may try this without it. I don't know that I need that, although I don't have to worry about accuracy as much. Yeah, it's going to be 100% anyway. Uh, picked up barbarism. What do we get here? Uh, max life, increased fire res. That's the big reason I took that. It gives me a little bit more fire resistance, a little bit of life, and increased fire res. We'll get to this gym in a second. Picked up slaughter over here. We've got juggernaut, cannibalistic right. Um, pick that up. Pick the inter uh, the reservation efficiency. I may pack. I may back out of this 
uh, shield one. So I am running a shield right now. I haven't totally decided exactly what I want to run because Tectonic Slam and the other one both let you use Mace, Scepter, Sword, Axe, Staff, or Unarmed. So you've got Mace, Scepter, Staff, or Unarmed, eh, Axe. So it's just, eh, what's different? One, two, three, four, five. There's five there, and there's one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, there's five here. So I haven't totally decided what I want to use. I like these axes. I keep finding better axes. I tried uh, Scepter, I think, in there. Oh, I guess Scepter's probably not going to work. That's probably a mace, I think. But I kind of just stuck with these axes. They seem to be the one to stick with. You can use a mace for stun, which this, which one is it? Something in here. Oh, this thing here. Hit stun, this concussive force. Hit stun as though dealing 50% more melee fire damage. Um, so I considered using a mace in there to do a little bit more stun, but I, I'm not totally sold on that yet. And that might be why I'm running into issues with damage because I haven't specced in, aside from this slaughter one, I've not specced into any damage specific thing like Harvester of Foes. I don't have this picked up. Um, there's a, like if I did two handed, there's Executioner over here. There's another node here with kinetic impacts. Like I haven't specced into any of those. I got, I think I've got plenty of room left. I could spec into this stuff if I wanted, but I wanted to go with shields because I wanted to get more retaliation. So I was thinking going with block and I did get a good shield at one point. They had like 24% Ellie res or something like that. It had a ridiculous amount for the campaign. Um, I've since switched it out. This one's got a lot more armor and a big chance to block which chance to block is 44%. I need to get that up a little bit higher. If I, if I want to work on this and keep it into the block realm, I need to get more shield stuff in there, but I got sideways on a bunch of other things like this node. Um, got concussive force, got lava lash. This penetrates 8% fire res and then increases fire damage. And then there's uh, settling ash. I don't know if I want to take the other two points in here or not, but that's another 32% increased fire damage. I may save those points. I'm not sure. Or I may go into those and I kind of like the ignite though. So I, I'm not sure. Uh, Veterans Wrath, this is gain two ra rage on melee hit. Uh, and inherent rage starts, inherent rage loss starts one second later. And then we've got more rage over here I could pick up. Plus 10 to max rage. I've got Berserk on here, but I don't know how much I actually want to use it. It's, it's okay. It's not as good as it was last week for sure. And then I've came over here to Disciple of the Unyielding because I wanted to get more endurance charges. And I think I might take 3% uh, increased damage per endurance frenzy or power charge. I may take those. I could also go into frenzy because I am with blood rage. We do get 25% uh, uh, do, 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 chance to gain a frenzy charge on kill. So we do get frenzy charges off of that. So I could come into this. I may go into that. I'm not sure. Um, but I only need one more level for that. And then it's kind of just, I don't know where to go from there. Exactly. So probably going to be damage. This is like the clear is not bad, but the bossing is terrible with this. It's, it's definitely got a lot of room to grow. It's, I like the ascendancy and I need to, I need to get some more points into the ascendancy stuff here, which brings us to this. So the first thing I took in here was flames advance. And that gave me these jewel sockets in here. Well, it didn't give me the jewel sockets, but it gave me the giant ring around them, which this thing here, I, this I kind of like. And it says non-unique jewels can cause increases and reductions to other damage types in a large radius to be transformed to apply to fire damage. Non-unique jewels also cause um, small and notable passive skills in a large radius to also grant plus three strength. So if I take this thing, everything in here is giving me additional strength. So that's a really cool, which I don't know if I could do this with, uh, I have to look at the ascendancy because this is all mostly geared towards fire stuff, but I'm kind of intrigued with um, exsanguinate because exsanguinate really scales, or there was something, not not just exsanguinate. It was the, uh, I think it was bone, the bone shatter of, not carnage. Yeah, maybe it was bone shatter of carnage. Yeah, it was Bone Shatter of Carnage with that one staff that uh, um, stacked strength. This this ascendancy right here, that piece with all this extra strength stacked onto it, because you get plus three strength for every single node that you take in here. So, I mean, 
mean, if you're picking up stuff for like Hardy and all this, that's a lot of extra strength stacked on. And then if you take utmost might with the 5% increased attribute mastery, that would be great. So that's what I've done is taken all this and it, this thing basically converts. You've got increased physical damage with axes. You flip that over, put this in here. Now it's increased damage with uh, ailments uh, or increased uh, fire damage and stuff like that. So all of these, uh, these were already fire, but now everything else has got, uh, well, no, these are already fire. I haven't picked anything else in here, but this was a good jewel saga uh, with all the increased damage with the shield and increased damage with axes. I can't do critical strikes, so that's kind of a, a non-point or non-issue at this point, but these have added a little bit of a fair bit of damage and... I'm looking for, there's some uh, unique jewels that do like extra strength and stuff like that, or add, I don't know, bump up the strength a little bit. So I might look at putting those in there. I don't know, it just opened up a few possibilities. Uh, we've also got another one over here I could go into if I wanted to go into any of this stuff on this side. Uh, then the other ascendancy I took is this one here. Modifiers to fire resistance also apply to cold and lightning res at 50% of their value. So that's why my uh, resistances are really good. I'm, I think I want to go up to Storm's Embrace, which gives you modifiers to max fire res, also apply to max cold and lightning res. I, I'm not sure if I want that. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's the one I want. And then it's either going to be Sun's Light or Death's Fury. So this one, Death's Fury, enemies you or your totem skill have a 5% chance to explode, dealing 500% of their damage, of their maximum life as fire damage. I kind of like that. But then this one here is nearby enemies, nearby enemy monsters, fire resistance against damage over time is minus 20% while you are stationary. So something on here I've got does covered in ash, this settling ash over here. So if I'm stay, um, not moving for two seconds, it'll cover everything in ash. I think that might go well with this stationary one here for sun's light. I'm not sure. The other one's like this sun's roar. I'm not using war cries and I don't really know I'll have to look up what Ancestral Call and Fist of War does. Well, Fist of War is over here. But I don't know that I want that on my body armor. I, I'm, I mean, I could six-link a crushing fist, I suppose, and six-link the... Uh, I don't know. I'd have to think about that. But I think what I want... I think what I want to do is Storm's Embrace and Sun's Light. If not Death's Fury and Sun's Light. I may not worry about Storm's Embrace. Yeah, this would increase my... Um, this increases your fire resistance quite a bit too. Uh, these increase damage though. So I'm not, I haven't ran them yet. I'm not entirely sure, but I really like that ascendancy. I, I love this ascendancy. I think this is really cool. So basically what I do is I come in here and I throw down a totem, uh, wait to get to drop, you know, do a little fist action on here and then just kill stuff off. That's basically it. That's the play style for this. Just kind of stand in place, wail on things. And it seems to be working fairly well. Like I've got some complaints about it. This is this is very slow in damage. It's it's not as good as it it was earlier in the campaign. Like it this started off way better. Did I switch over? I think I did. And then yeah, some of this stuff, like, yeah. Some of this stuff gets absolutely crazy. Yeah, we died. So, yeah, a little bit too much to handle there. But that is the build so far. That's kind of where I've gotten to with it. Um, I like this build. I think it's it's been fun. It definitely needs a lot of work. This is, uh, oh, and uh, for my axe, I did put the add eight to whatever fire damage from those rune things. I saw, I think Captain Lance was talking about that in one of his videos. I didn't even think about it, but be, because we're getting all that stuff from the town stuff you can put that on and, and there's no level requirements or anything so i've been tacking those on and running through the campaign with them so i don't know i kind of like this build but i you know i don't have enough of the instilling orbs to set up all my flasks I, there's just my gear's not that great five link or four link gear uh it's just i need more life you know i there's some definite problems with it i'd like to switch out the boots but I need to get better movement boots, you know, I don't know. So anyway, um, 
This is the second build that I've got. I enjoyed it. I think it's really cool. I think this could use a lot of refinement. It is definitely not going to get me through the campaign or through, not through the campaign, but it's definitely not going to get me through the mapping section anytime soon. So what I'm probably going to do is, I don't know, maybe take a little bit of a break and then come back with a different build, start working on something else, maybe work, try a couple of different ascendancies out. I, I think honestly, I think I really like this Chieftain Ascendancy a lot. This is probably, um, Juggernaut's really good. I like Juggernaut a lot. I like, uh, I'm, I'm really liking the Trickster Ascendancy over here. I think that's really good. Um, like there's a lot of possibilities here with fire skills. Uh, like I was saying, I could probably do something with Exsanguinate on here because you're going to get some of the, um, what was I looking at for over here? Oh, these, the stacking strength, and, or not Exsanguinate, it was the Bone Shatter of Carnage. Like, that would be a good build on here for stacking strength with, I think, or any kind of, maybe a little bit of a strength stacker with this, because you could pick up these things all over the place. Of course, you got to invest in the nodes around them, but I don't know, that's kind of cool. I, I like this. This is kind of one of my favorite ascendancies now. It's new and shiny, and I, I'm digging it. So anyway, that is the second build that I've got up through the campaign. It's not a winner by any stretch. It could use a lot of work, but I did learn a lot with this, which is the entire premise of why I'm doing what I'm doing is to learn what the ascendancies feel like, how they work and things like that. So anyway, that's going to do it for this video. We will catch you on the next one. Take care.